Unfortunately, half Thor Bjornsson appeared to suffer a significant left pec injury during this bench press earlier today at his powerlifting competition. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you about this injury to try and learn from this unfortunate event. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and if you're new here and enjoy learning about the underlying anatomy and mechanisms of various sports injuries, then please consider subscribing to help support the channel and stay up to date with all my videos. My voice is getting a little bit better, so still bear with me, but let's dive into what happened here with Thor. The backstory here is of course really important because we all know Thor from his days as just a title winning strongman. But recently back in February, he actually announced he was coming out of retirement and was going to try and break some records and compete purely in powerlifting. So now here we are just a couple of months later, Thor's been trying to really increase his strength, increase his power very, very quickly, which sets the stage a little bit for what we see here. Most of the times that we see a tendon rupture, we see this big recoil of the muscle and this very dramatic visual thing that something with a lot of energy has snapped and we see this big recoil. So that's kind of the first clue of what we wanna watch for here. As he's lowering the bar down, this is gonna be the eccentric part of his lift. His pec muscles are trying to fire, but they're also lengthening as he lowers the bar down. That's gonna be eccentric load which is a lot of stress on the tendon. Keep an eye on, of course, his right and kind of his left pec region. So this sort of contour right here and then the right one. As he ultimately lowers this bar down, if you look closely, what we will certainly see is sure enough, we see this elevation of his left pectoral region compared to the right side. And I don't think this is just the angle because we'll look at a different angle where we can actually see the tendon itself rupture or pop. Then as Thor continues and kind of gets some help, is able to start pushing this back up, now we see even a more pronounced sort of elevation, recoiling of that pec muscle on the left side compared to still some flattening on the right. So this is again after the injury has occurred, and then this is before when he's about to lower the weight down. So you see a very clear difference in those two in terms of the elevation and sort of bulging of that pec muscle. And now from this angle, we really get the final confirmation. Here as we watch closely, we can see as Thor is lowering the weight down, again, that eccentric component, and then what you might have noticed right there is this visible snap or sort of recoil of a structure on the inside of Thor's left arm. Next, we'll talk about what that was that we just witnessed and why this injury could have happened to Thor. But first, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by a longtime supporter of this channel and the maker of the best skincare products for men, Geology. Geology is an 18-time award-winning company that creates personalized and effective skincare and hair care products designed just for you. Geology removes all the stress of trying to figure out the perfect routine just for you by walking you through a simple, straightforward quiz that's gonna help you focus on exactly what you're looking for. Whether you're trying to fight acne, reduce oiliness, maybe improve the hydration of your skin, Geology has a routine designed just for you. In the morning, I use an everyday face wash and then a daily morning face cream. In the evening, it's another round of the face wash, a nourishing eye cream, and then a repairing night cream. Geology's hooking you all up because right now, if you use code BRIAN70, you're gonna get 70% off their award-winning skincare trial set. But on top of that, you're also gonna get up to 50% off on a bonus item from either their hair care, skin care, or body wash lineup. It's one of the best offers you'll find, and I really think you're going to enjoy using these products. They've been great for me, they're backed by science, and again, it makes things simple and they really just work. So thank you again to Geology for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel, and let's get back to our learning. Before we go back to the lift, let's first just go over our anatomy to understand what we were seeing on that screen. So here we're looking at the different muscles on the front of the chest and the front of the left shoulder and arm. Of course, the most superficial muscle on the outside of the shoulder is going to be the deltoid. The deltoid has three different heads. You can see a little bit of kind of the septation here between those heads, so an anterior head in the front, middle head in the side, and then posterior head all the way in the back. If we hide our deltoid, then beneath that, we're going to start seeing finally our pec major tendon, as well as our biceps. So our triceps, of course, in the back, let's get rid of that one. And then what we're gonna be left with here are really just the two muscles to discuss. We have two pectoralis muscles. We have a pectoralis major, which is the big one that sits on the front of the chest that provides all that power. And then deep to the pectoralis major, we have the pectoralis minor. It's this little thin one that sits on the front of the rib cage and really is not as active certainly in big major movements. The pec minor actually goes up and inserts on the coracoid process of the shoulder blade as opposed to the pec major is gonna come out and insert over here on the arm bone. If we zoom into that origin and kind of insertion on the humerus, there's a really interesting relationship between what we see with the biceps. So the biceps of course has two tendon heads. There's a long head and a short head. The long head is the one that oftentimes snaps and is injured when we get that big recoil of the muscle. The long head of the biceps tendon actually travels deep 
to the pectoralis major tendon. And so when we're looking on ultrasound and MRI scans, one of the ways that we'll look and see if there's been a pec tendon injury is if there has, what we'll see is elevation of this biceps tendon where there's no longer a taut pec tendon kind of anchoring it down against the humerus. And so it elevates up superficial off of the humerus. So a lot of stuff in just this general area going on in terms of anatomy in our shoulder. But let's hide the biceps. And now really all we're left with is going to be that pec. So big, broad muscle belly of the pec kind of winding down into a more narrow kind of short tendon inserting on the upper portion of the humerus or the arm bone. So now if we go back to this side shot here, what we're seeing in terms of these different contours and kind of outlines, this little bit right here is going to be that pectoralis major tendon coming across inserting on the humerus, which is right here. So then whenever we advance this a little bit forward and we all of a sudden see that snap kind of right there, we see that recoil that's going to be the pectoralis tendon having been injured. There's really nothing else in that area that's gonna go up across. Again, we see that bulging of the pec muscle that we talked about before. And so that bit right there is sort of what confirms that there's been some type of injury to the pec muscle, to the pec tendon. So the next steps here for Thor in terms of treatment are going to be number one, yes, confirm the injury. I mean, we saw snap, we saw sort of the, bul the bulging up of the muscle, but remember pecs are like any other muscle tendon in the body where a tear can occur at different places. The tear can occur in the muscle itself, so purely muscular tear, which is not something we do surgery for. The tear can occur clearly at the tendon, so where the tendon goes into the bone or even pulling off a chunk of the bone along with it, or the tear can occur at this place we call the myotendinous junction, which is the area where the muscle and the tendon sort of blend together. And I'll say that tears at that myotendinous junction are really hard and don't necessarily do as well with surgery compared to tears that are purely in the tendon. And there can also, of course, be partial injuries here. So what we might've seen could just have been a partial tear where part of the tendon or one of the heads of the pectoralis muscle was injured as opposed to the whole thing completely popping off. The pec has a really interesting anatomy to it. There's two different heads to the muscle. There's the clavicular head and then there's the sternal head. This model on the anatomy tool doesn't differentiate them out, but the clavicular head is going to be just this portion kind of right up here. The part of the muscle that comes off of the clavicle. Whereas the sternal portion is going to be all this down here that comes off of the sternum or the breastbone in the center of the chest. Those muscles sort of twist around one another as they go into the humerus. And so you can see here how that sort of deep portion of the tendon is going to be from the sternal component and the more superficial portion is from the clavicular head. So it's this really interesting sort of twisting position that it takes as it goes from the muscle being nice and stacked on top to then twisting as it inserts onto the arm bone. This hooked shape of that tendon insertion is represented better here in this picture. So you can see as we cut off all the muscle, this little U-shaped structure is going to be the anatomy of the pectoralis major tendon. And of course, recall the biceps is gonna be running up deep to that tendon to then go up and insert up onto the labrum. So in this little U-shaped configuration, this back portion right here on this underside is going to be from those sternal head fibers, and this top portion is gonna be from more the clavicular head part that's going up in this direction. So you get this really interesting, again, kind of twist, and tears of the tendon can involve either just kind of this back portion, they can involve the full thing, they can sort of wrap around in this sort of U-shaped configuration as the progression of the load gets higher and higher. So it's a really unique, anatomical location that influences how we treat it based on exactly where the tear occurred. The final part of this is just why did this happen? And of course, everybody is going to appropriately kind of question and talk about the role of anabolic steroids. Now, Thor in the past has talked about using anabolic steroids. I'm not sure what the current status of that is, but we know that there does seem to be some association with people who have used anabolic steroids and tendon ruptures. And there's two schools of thought for why that occurs, and nobody has really conclusively proved one or the other. The first is that whenever you use anabolic steroids, particularly in the upper body, there's an asymmetric or kind of a mismatch growth of the tissue. The muscle grows and becomes much stronger, much, much quicker than the tendon. And so in that scenario, you have this really, really strong muscle, and you have a tendon that hasn't had time to properly grow, to adjust its collagen, to properly strengthen itself, to handle the load of the muscle that's pulling on the tendon. <clears throat> so then the muscle and the tendon unit, the tendon becomes the weaker spot and ultimately the site of failure when there is a critical load. But then the other 
but then the other possibility is that the anabolic steroids affect the actual integrity of the tendon itself, meaning it structurally changes the tendon. And in animal studies, this has been shown to be true, where anabolic steroid exposure makes the tendon stiffer, it makes it less able to sort of maintain that resistance to an external load. But this hasn't necessarily been proven out in humans. And if this were the case, we'd expect that we would see an equal number of tendon ruptures in anabolic steroid users in the upper and lower bodies, but it tends to be more common in the upper body, so there's a little bit of this mismatch. And then the other confounding factor is people who rupture their tendons are people who are doing heavy weightlifting, and so people who are doing heavy weightlifting are, of course, the ones that are using anabolic steroids. So it's one of those things, is it just because that's the population that tends to rupture tendons and so we see it more like just because both ice cream sales and drowning deaths go up in the summer doesn't mean that ice cream sales are correlated with drowning deaths so there's a lot of unknown with why anabolic steroid use is associated with these tendon injuries but there clearly is this association and something to at least consider in this situation like I said at the beginning of the video, knowing that Thor had been just recently coming out of retirement, I believe this lift might have even been an attempt at his own personal record. I wonder more about that mismatch between what he was doing, even in the absence of any possible anabolic steroid use, with still growing the muscle strength much faster than the underlying tendon is able to maintain. The good news is people can still come back and bench press, compete, etc. after a tendon rupture like this. It's usually a six month plus recovery after the surgery. And we still, of course, have to wait and see exactly the full extent of the tear and whether again, it was at the muscle, the junction of the muscle and the tendon or purely at the tendon. But hopefully this was a helpful video to talk about the anatomy, some of the things we see with these tendon injuries in the case of half Thor Bjornsson. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.